Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you today's word for June 8th, 2015. Well, th today's message is part of a series entitled Grace-Based Success, where all year now we've been studying how to win in life, how to do it God's way by His unearned and amazing grace. The title of today's message is Honor is the Culture of God's Kingdom, and it's part three. Part three of this, this mini-series on honor, part three of, of lessons where I've been teaching you on honor, and I asked the Lord, I said, listen, I'm supposed to be teaching on Peter. And while we were teaching on Peter, I just stumbled across this passage in Mark 6, 1 through 6, and then Luke 4, and about honor. And, and then the Lord just had me to teach on honor. And I asked the Lord this weekend and really again this morning, I said, do you want me to continue to teach on honor? I mean, it's, should I make so much of a big deal out of this? And the Lord said, yes. The Lord said, yes, it should be a big deal to you because it's a big deal to me. So, hey, once he said that, I left it alone. I'm going to teach on honor as long as he wants me to teach on honor. And then I'll move on whenever he releases me, right? Because at the end of the day, I'm just here to do or share with you whatever the Lord allows me to share with you. And right now, he wants us to learn about honor. He wants us to think about honor. He wants us to learn his system, his way, so that we could be the men, the women that he has called and destined, designed, desires for us to be. And right now, the vein that he has me in is teaching on honor. So let's get back to Luke's account of Jesus' encounter in his hometown. This is in Luke chapter four, and you can look at really begin, beginning at verse 18 all the way down to verse 27. But I'm gonna pick it up around verse 23, 24. So Jesus said, the truth is a prophet is not accepted in his own hometown. During the, and then Jesus gives these two anecdotes, right? So these two examples, and, and I, I'm gonna teach on these two examples for the next few days. So he says this, during the time of Elijah, it did not rain in Israel for three and a half years. We know that. There was no food anywhere in the whole country. There were many widows in Israel during that time. But the fact is, Elijah was sent to none of those widows in Israel. He was sent, sent by God, only to a widow in Zarephath in a town in Sidon. And then he goes on to give you another example. He says, and there were many people in Israel living with leprosy during the time of the prophet Elisha, but none of them were healed. The only one healed was Naaman. And he was from another country. He was from Syria, not Israel. So what does this mean to you today? I have several things to share with you on today. I just believe that this vein that we're in on honor is something the Lord wants us to hear and wants us to, to understand, to tap into, to develop in honor so that we can receive his grace. So this year of great grace, so we could become the men and women that God has called us to be. This is the year of great grace, but we got to position ourselves to receive the grace of God. So let's get into it. Number one, it's easier to honor strangers than those you know very well. And so this is, this is where you really got to develop an honor so that you can honor those even when you know them well, people that God is using, you need to honor the, the anointing that's on their life. You need to honor the, the, the man, the woman that God called them to be even more than who they are outside of God, right? So let me just go back to the two examples that God used or that Jesus used. So Elijah was anointed. Jesus was basically explaining, Elijah was anointed to meet the needs of people during the time of famine. But the Lord did not send the prophet to anyone in Israel, right there where he was. And then Jesus pointed out that there were many widows right there in Israel, right around Elijah, who could have benefited from the man of God, who could have benefited from the prophet, who could have benefited from the anointing that was on his life. But when God was, was ready to move supernaturally through Elijah, God did not send him to any of the widows there in Israel. God sent him all the way to Sidon, to Zarephath, to a widow there, way in another country. Why? Because that widow was going to be in a position to honor the anointing on the man of, uh, of God's life, to honor the anointing on the prophet's life. And because she was in a position to honor, God sent her blessing, her breakthrough, all the way to her. Her, her breakthrough found her because she was in a position to honor and to honor God's servant, in the earth. And then Jesus gave another example of Elisha, right? And so Elisha was anointed to heal an incurable disease, which was leprosy. And Jesus pointed out the fact that right there, right around Elisha, there were many lepers. 
right there living in Israel, there were many people who were dealing with leprosy and there was a man anointed to deal with leprosy right there within their midst and none of them got healed. None of them tapped into God's grace for healing through this man of God because they failed to honor him. And when it came time for Elisha to release the supernatural uh, power of God for healing for leprosy, it took a foreigner. It took a military commander to come all the way from Syria. His name was Naaman. And this military Syrian commander came all the way from Syria, came to Israel and got his breakthrough because he came with a position or heart of honor. I'm going to deal with him more tomorrow. But my point, here's some points here. Don't let your familiarity with your spiritual leaders keep you from receiving supernaturally from the anointing that's on their lives. Listen, God wants us, God has called us to operate in the supernatural. Miracles, signs, and wonders should follow the preaching of the word of God. We are supposed to be naturally supernatural, but you won't see the supernatural manifested in your life through another human if you fail to honor what God is doing or anointed or grace that person to do. If you fail to honor the grace on the human, then you'll be able, you won't be able to receive from that human. So never get so familiar with your spiritual leaders that you fail to honor the person that God called them to be, that you fail to honor what they are graced and anointed to do. The people in Jesus's hometown were so familiar with Jesus, that they failed to honor the anointing on his life. Those who could only see Jesus as Joseph's son or Mary's boy or just the carpenter from around the corner, they could not receive from Jesus supernaturally. And although Jesus was there to do supernatural things, he could not, the Bible says, because they failed to honor him. Their familiarity with Jesus made it hard for them to honor the person that God called him to be. See, you got to get past the man or the woman in order to receive from the God in the man or the woman. Listen, at the end of the day, as humans, we are flawed. We're not perfect. But, but God still uses us. God's, God uses us by grace in spite of our imperfections. So you can't get hung up on someone's imperfections. You can't get hung up on someone's flaws and then not receive from the God in them. You got to get past the man to receive from the God in the man. And that's what honor enables you to do. If you only acknowledge the man, then you're only going to be able to receive from the man and you will fail to receive from the God in the man. So thank God for the man. But really, what you really need to be doing is perceiving, receiving, uh, opening your heart to everything that God is saying through that set man or woman of God. So honor, when, when you develop an honor, it positions you to receive from God through his anointed vessels here in the earth. And it takes a heart of honor to receive from the supernatural through another person. Now, I'm not saying that you can't receive just, you know, naturally. Yeah, you're going to hear people and you're, oh, that was good. That was good. No, no, no. I'm talking about supernatural. And for you to receive from the supernatural through a person, then you're, you're going to need to develop a heart of honor because you got to get past that person. And to see the God in the person, you got to get past that person. And to see the, the anointing on the person, you got to get past that person and open your heart to receive from God, knowing that you're not receiving from them. You're actually receiving from God through them. See, and then watch this. It even takes honor to position yourself to be used of God. Not only does it require honor for you to receive from the God through someone else, it actually develops it requires developing a heart of honor for you to actually give yourself over to God to be used. You, you need to even honor yourself, honor the anointing that's on your own life. You need to see, yes, you've messed up. Yes, you messed up more times than you want to talk about. Yes, you have faults and flaws and failures, all of that. Got it. But God still wants to use you. And because God still wants to use you, you need to honor the assignment. You need to honor the anointing. You need to honor the calling bigger than you. Bigger than you. And because of that, when you honor God and you honor what he called you to do, then you can give yourself over to God to be used, even though you know you're not perfect, even though you know you've messed up, then now what you're doing is you're honoring the assignment. You're honoring the God of the assignment. You're honoring the grace. You're honoring the God of grace. He gave you the purpose and the grace for the purpose, and he knew all the mistakes you were going to make, and he called you anyway. And so now you can honor yourself and honor the God in you to the point where you give yourself over to God as a vessel. Oh man, there's, there's so much here to teach on honor. I'm going to stop here. 
I'm going to stop here for today. I'm definitely not done. Tomorrow, we're going to look at naming and learn some more things about honor. I trust that this is being a blessing to you. I know it's good because it's the will of God is what God told me to give you. Right. So since this is where God has me right now, I just believe that this message is going to bless people all over the world. So let's declare something over our lives to head into this Monday morning and the week strong. Speak this over your life. Repeat after me in faith from a believing heart. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your grace. And also my requirement to live by faith. I don't work for or earn anything you give me. All you give me, you give me by your unearned and amazing grace. However, your kingdom does function a certain way. In order to receive from you and to properly function in your kingdom, I must learn your system. Your system operates on a culture of honor. It takes honor to acknowledge you in the lives of humans. It takes honor to acknowledge you in my own life. It takes honor to release my faith to access your grace when you're operating through a human in the planet. So, Father, I declare by faith that I develop a culture of honor. I grow in your kingdom culture. I position myself to receive from you through others every day. I love it when you speak to me directly, but I also appreciate it when you speak to me through other people. In order to always position myself to hear from you through others, I maintain a heart and a spirit of honor. I am a man of honor. I live an honorable life and I receive all you want to give me through your anointed vessels in the earth. And I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Sign up. You will get the messages and there will be a blessing to you as you head into this day. Just remember, develop in the culture of honor. So you can see yourself and see others the way that God does. God bless you.